Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Alpha 3.23 is coming soon with a load of new important features. In fact, some people would say the most important features of the 3.23 cycle. June looks like it's going to have a good amount of interesting events and we're just about to go into June. It's the end of May. We've also got Fleet Week coming to an end. So Alpha 3.23.2 is going to be coming pretty soon. CIG said, we are continuing to work through the remaining blocking issues for 3.23.2, which currently contains hangars, cargo updates, and more. Since these changes have huge widespread effects on almost every system in our game and how it operates, our goal is to go through with an accelerated Evocati to Waves 1 to 3 system when ready. We are expecting multiple different PTU builds starting next Tuesday with 3.23.2, hopefully Wednesday. We will provide more updates next week. So we can expect something more tangible on Wednesday, the 29th of May. And what exactly does this patch then have? Well, actually quite a lot. So it's got the persistent and personal hangers in there. So that's actually quite a big deal. Your hanger that you choose to spawn at, your, your sort of home hanger, will be based on the size of the largest ship that you own when the patch sort of starts. So if you've got a really big ship, then you have effectively a larger home hanger to start with. And the hanger that you start with will be personal and persistent. So what does that actually mean? Well, that means that you can make changes, you can customize it, you can leave stuff on the floor. And when you come back to that hanger, it w won't have been wiped that any changes that you make will persist. So you can leave trash on the floor. You should be able to have customization items, which should be purchasable potentially in this patch as well there. So couches, um, some silly stuff like soda machines or armor stands, things like that. You'll also have hanger kiosks here and you'll be able to bring up ships from the actual hangar. So you can be in your hangar, you can operate the terminal in the hangar and your ship will come out from the floor and you can obviously despawn stuff by putting it there and then it'll go back into the floor. And now this is very different from the freight elevators which are also here. So off to the side you'll have a freight elevator kiosk which you can then go I want to bring up this cargo. Beep, 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 beep. Then the cargo from the landing zone that you're at will come up in an elevator, you can put that on board your ship, or you can bring stuff from your ship and put it in the cargo elevator, the freight elevator there, and bam, that will basically be put into storage at that zone. Now this is a massive change because basically you've got loading and unloading of cargo now as a thing. You're not just going to be able to land your ship and immediately sell your cargo, you're going to have to unload it. And then when you buy cargo, you're going to have to load it. There's also item banks around on landing zones and stations. So basically, these are little points where you can access your FPS items at that landing zone and do some management there. So th these are going to be around in lots of areas, so you don't have to carry all your FPS items on you all the time. You can literally just go, there. as long as they're at this landing zone, bam, I can sort of move them around. But it is only obviously the smaller items, it's not major cargo items. Now I think the plan is to still have cargo missions as part of 3.23.2, but don't quote me on that. I do believe they wanted to have hauling and cargo missions here but let's see if that actually makes the patch. We do know they've been fixing um, things like uh, dupe exploits, um, loads of problems with ground vehicles are fixed in this patch apparently, uh, there's a load better performance. We also know that there's a plan to get the new dynamic blockade runner event in game at some point during the 3.23 cycle if possible, potentially with this patch or being run a little bit later. So this is basically an overhauled version of the old Ninetales lockdown patch um, and it's now still nine tails lockdown effectively and um, it has the major space station in an area the leo space station near a planet basically locked down and the rest stops l1 and l2 now by it locked down and players must run the blockade and sort of purchase and sell a percentage of quantanium before the time runs out it's sort of a mixture of combat and cargo i also believe that the idea is that they can then actually propagate this to other sort of pirates and different groups as well not just nine tails when might this patch go live i'll ask zin tomorrow when she's back into work but it <laughs> Yeah, she's a lot more accurate than I am normally. I'm expecting it at some point in June. They're going to want to try and get it in as early as possible. And they obviously talked about accelerated timeframes for stuff. Now, why might there be accelerated timeframes? Well, obviously they're working towards Alpha 4.0, but there's things like the Xeno Threat event that they want to run. So um, phase six of the um, Overdrive Initiative, which is the basically 
old but improved Xeno Threat, Fleet Battle and refueling of the Javelin. CIG wanted to run that pretty soon after Fleet Week ends, so um, expect early June for that. There's also something in mid-June, there's Alien Week or First Contact Day. So this is typically a celebration of alien ships that aren't typically talked about during Fleet Week, but there's a load of alien ships. It'll be alien combat ships and alien ships of all descriptions. Some people think that that potentially new Mirai ship might turn up some sort of hybrid Fat Fury. It's quite possible that there's a new ship or concept turning up though, but there's a load of sort of um, event related stuff that we're going on with that with like um, competitions and potentially some stuff going on Arena Commander. CIG have also now started talking about their uh, Bar Citizen World Tour sort of continuing and they're starting to uh, talk about different places around the world that they're going to be visiting. Some are going to have a big CIG presence, some are going to be near their studios. I'll link that stuff down below. It does look like from that post though that there is a new Banu or Xi'an Pyramid Flare item that you'll be able to get yourself by attending those events. The armor they're showing in that picture is the uh, Xanthal Xi'an set, which makes me think that maybe it's a Xi'an item rather than a Banu one, but I don't know. But typically at CIG attended events, they often give away little digital goodies like the Banu cubes, like the um, Folos. Fleet Week is coming to an end. It's the sort of finale starting today at time of recording, but you can go to the Drake Halls and you can rent all the previous day's ships, so it might be worth your time doing that. There should be some interesting war bond deals on the RSI website, and I believe you can buy all of those previous day's ships and vehicles that aren't limited by hull, so not Javelins or Idris or Krakens or anything like that, um, unless any are left over, which I don't think they are. I'm not sure if there's anything more interesting sort of scenic wise at the halls coming out for the finale and sometimes they have sort of armor displays and ground vehicle displays stuff like that something i did notice is the ironclad assault that new drake concept ship went up from 525 dollars to 535 dollars for the store credit version for some reason it might have just been a, a original typo at, at 525 dollars I, I would have kept it at that though that's weird um so new ships and vehicles that we had we had the urza medivac and that was important because they also, in 3.3.1, made all tier 3 medical beds able to respawn players, not just tier 2 ones anymore. Um, you've got the MPUV tractor, which basically is MPUV with two um, sort of tractor beams on it, but also it effectively makes the series modular. So you can put a cargo crate underneath it, or you can put, eventually we'll be able to put a personnel or cargo module or whatever else under it as well, not just a, a sort of cargo container. It's a actually really useful sort of piece of utility equipment now. I, I really rate it. Uh, you've got the Sabre Firebird, which is effectively a sister ship of the Sabre Raven that goes, ah, I don't want the cool stuff the Raven has. Get rid of the EMPs and the cool computer stuff. And let's just give it a load of missiles. I think it's actually getting some more missiles as well. Someone said that it was getting a, basically a reload of missiles. It's in my notes, but I can't find a source for that. The Retaliator previous torpedo bomber has been sort of updated to gold standard and now it's modular and it's got its cargo pods as well as its torpedo pods and eventually it will also have the dropship pod and the living area pods. We also have the concept ships, the ironclad freighter and ironclad assault which is a reasonably big armoured transport for cargo or for um, vehicles and marines based on which version you get. It is going to be your last chance to check out the Idris tour and the Polaris flying around with the UE fleet. Now I've not been lucky at finding that Polaris in game unfortunately. The Idris tour, yeah I was able to tour the Idris a few times but I haven't been able to find the UE fleet flying around. They don't seem to appear on the servers I, I've been on and I've spent a good few man hours looking for it. Boom! That's your updates for today. I am really interested to know, are you excited for Alpha 3.23.2? Do you think it's actually going to be really quickly going from Evo to Wave 1 to Open PTU to Live? Are you looking forward to Xeno Threat? And do you think that's going to be um, going live pretty early in June? Have you enjoyed Fleet Week this time around? Any of those ships or vehicles that excited you? What do you think of the Ironclad? 
Whatever your thoughts or questions, though, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. If people are wondering where Zin is, it's Bank Holiday Monday, so she's got the day off, which means I have to work more. But I know something that might make your life easier. NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer. Oh, the best darn VPN that we talk about on the channel. You should go check it out in the links below. Big discounts, and it helps to support the channel. It gives you better security, privacy, and accessibility of the interwebs. Something I also like to do in Star Citizen is use my eyes, and you can use Beam to have your webcam turned into a eye tracker, which is very usable in Star Citizen. Check out the links below for that as well. May in Star Citizen is about fleets and Fleet Week and flying with friends, and we've partnered up with Lunar Wolves, a Star Citizen org, to give away a fleet of ships. Commenting on any of my videos during the month not only gets you a chance to win a Spirit C1, but also also, a Constellation Andromeda, a Vanguard Sentinel, and a Corsair, courtesy of Lunar Wolves. They'll each be going out to a different winner chosen randomly from the video comments. But wait, there is more. Sign up to the Lunar Wolves recruitment page, link down below, for a chance for even more ships, including an RSI Polaris with lifetime insurance and a Hornet F7C Mark II. Winners of those will be selected randomly from eligible org signups. Lunar Wolves welcome all that share their passion for adventure and love of Star Citizen. You can learn more about them on their org page or at lunarwolves.org. If you would like to further support our channel, please like, subscribe, comment, share these videos. And if you'd like to go the extra mile, and I would love you to, please consider becoming a Patreon or clicking that join button under my videos. It goes a huge way in allowing us to make daily content and keep the channel going. You'll get some exclusive content from that as well. Anytime Zin and I can actually put it out as well as help evolve the channel with polls and suggestions and that sort of stuff. Thank you so much for watching to the end and have a great May. It's going to be a good one.